So because Tomb Raider's coming out within the next few weeks, you want to talk about that? No, fuck that. Let's talk about a good movie that comes out this month. Let's talk about Pacific Rim. <laughs> Pacific Rim is a movie in which giant robots punch the shit out of slightly giant and monsters. In other words, it's not supposed to be taken all that seriously. Which didn't stop the people making it putting a crap ton of effort into making every single Jaeger and Kaiju scene in the movie anyway. For example, did you know the Jaeger Gypsy Danger is based on a cross between the Chrysler Building and John Wayne. John Wayne? You know John Wayne? John Wayne. People are going to be so confused about why that clip's in, because that clip's going to come up a couple more times in this video, because I find it so goddamn funny. Go see our video on why Jackie Chan likes horse pornography to find out why we're putting that clip in. <laughs> there's just no, there's no, no link. context. If, if you want to know why we keep saying John Wayne, go find out why Jackie Chan likes horse porn. You know what? You can find out two things today. If you think I'm making that up, I'm really, really not. According to an interview with director Guillermo del Toro, he worked closely with the artists on the film to make sure every Jaeger had a distinctive look representative of where in the world they came from. Gypsy Danger was the American Jaeger, right? Yes, it was. And as I mentioned previously, the look of that Jaeger was based on a cross between... John Wayne? You know John Wayne? and a typical American city skyline with direct inspiration being drawn from the look of the Chrysler building. I can see in the appearance it's got like a bit of a building look to it, but where does John Wayne come in? That's because you're only looking at a picture, Brad, and the people at home are only looking at a picture. However, if you see Gypsy Danger in motion, you will notice that it has a very distinctive gunslinger-esque power strut. And that was a very deliberate decision to make it look like it was walking like an old west gunslinger. Chopper, do you have a visual? Over. Or like John Wayne. John Wayne? You know John Wayne? John Wayne? You know, you know John, John Wayne? It's gonna go so fucking it's, much. It's never not funny. <laughs> the best clip in any film. In the same interview in which Guillermo del Toro revealed that the look of Gypsy Danger was inspired by that of an iconic American building, he also revealed that the look of the Russian Jaeger, Cherno Alpha, the look of that Jaeger was inspired by a Russian nuclear missile containment silo, a Russian T-34 tank, and a robot from Mobile Suit Gundam. A cocktail of ingredients so ridiculously awesome, I wouldn't be surprised if it was written across the script in crayon. Is there a reason why Cherno Alpha looks so different to the other Jaegers? What, you mean why it looks like a big lumbering piece of shit? That's because in the context of the film, Cherno Alpha is one of like the earliest Jaegers. It's one of like the Model 1 Jaegers, so it's not as refined as all the other ones, but it still works. And also, I believe, um, because of like behind-the-scenes supplementary material, it was designed to not have a head. Because they believe that if it doesn't have a head, it doesn't have the instinctual weak point of other Jaegers. Which is a good idea, but it doesn't stop it eating shit in the movie anyway. I call Cherno Alpha just the pots and pans robot. Because that's what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like a little kid who's put a pan on it his does, head. It's the pots and pans robot. It's the little robot that could. It's scope dog. It's like, I can try hard. I am in no way as advanced as all these other Jaegers. But fuck it, I'm going to go in and just punch everything anyway. So all the Jaegers were based on just combinations of different things? No, Brad. All the Jaegers were based on combinations of different awesome things. Would you like to hear what the rest of them were based on? I would. Let's do that now, then. So the Chinese Jaeger? Crimson Typhoon? Yes, that was based on a combination of HAL 9000 with a fighting style of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Fun fact for anyone watching, Crimson Typhoon is the only Jaeger shown in the movie that actually has the ability to kick. Which is weird how it's based on a box. <laughs> the, because the idea is that it's the only one that's light and advanced enough to like lift itself up into the air to perform a kick without falling over. But I like the idea that they also based it on Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> that <laughs> boxer famously known for his kick. That's why he was such a good boxer. He was kicking everyone. And then what was the last one? It was the, uh, the, Australian, the Australian one. Australian Jaeger. Yeah. Yep, Strikey Eureka. That was based on a combination of an NFL linebacker and a dirty boxer. <laughs> Which means they made the Australian Jaeger basically a criminal. <laughs> 
They're the four we get to actually see, aren't they? Except for a stack of Pentecost Jaeger, which you see in a flashback. Oh, that one doesn't have a name, does it? It does, mate. Romeo Blue. Learn the fucking law, man. Romeo goddamn Blue. Why do you know the name of it? <laughs> because they're all awesome. And that's the thing that frustrated me about this movie, as awesome as it is. There are so many cool ideas in that movie that never get explored. Like, do you know what the name of the Brazilian, like, Jaeger, designed to protect Brazil, is called? Diablo Intercept. Oh! Because that, oh, that's so fucking cool. Because that's what its job is, intercepting demons and devils. Why is that not in the movie? Oh, that's a, why, why? I want this movie so bad. That's all well and good, but after hearing that the name of the Brazilian Jaeger that we never got to see was Diablo Intercept, I'm really frustrated and upset that we never got a scene in Pacific Rim that was a flashback to the first meeting of the World Council when they all introduced their country's Jaeger. Because that would have been fucking amazing. I want to see all the world leaders sat around measuring their robo dicks against one another, trying to say, well, the Americans are like, well, our robot's called Romeo Blue. Because they're like, oh God, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty strong. No, 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 no. Cherno Alpha. It's like, damn that. Oh, that's strong. That's strong. That's an album cover there. Like, if you put that on the front cover of like a power metal album, I'd buy that. I'd buy that. And then, then the Brazilian delegation's like, <laughs> can you hear these guys? He just leans to his microphone and goes, Diablo Intercept. Then everyone just throws their hands up in the air and just walks out because we done. We done. Game over. The, ki the kaiju can just go home. That's why would you ever fight that? It's like, nah, done. Done. And that's not in the movie. I want to see that. I want to see this is the Brazilian guy. Diablo intercepts. Like, oh, and everyone's just like going mad hype. And then the robot punches through the building and it opens up its palm and the Brazilian leader steps onto its hand and just gets lifted back out. Then he stood there like M. Bison with a cape on. <laughs> <laughs> So what about the kaiju? We can't forget about the kaiju, because they're half the movie as well. Starting with Knifehead. Knifehead was very obviously based on a goblin shark and all of your nightmares as a child. Then you have Leatherback, which was based on an ape. Then you have Otachi, which was based on a traditional Chinese dragon. And then finally, the final boss of the movie, Slattern, was based on a combination of a hammerhead shark and every single baddie from the Power Rangers crammed into one. That thing you said about Power Rangers. Yeah, I made that bit up. The rest is true. The Power Rangers bit is just my own flair. So you can see how yeah, you look at Slatter and you think, yeah, shades of a hammerhead shark, but also every Power Rangers monster ever, just a little bit. Magic one, make my monster grow! Pacific Rim actually reminds me a bit of Power Rangers. Well, it's based on the same concept, isn't it? Like giant robots fighting monsters. That's like a staple of Power Rangers or Super Sentai, the show it was based on. And they are owned by the same company, film-wise. Are you saying we could have the Megazord fight alongside Gypsy Danger? We could, yes, because they're all owned by Legendary Pictures. As it is the current movie version of Godzilla and King Kong. And I know King Kong and Godzilla are going to be fighting. And I know Gilmore Del Toro was like, I would really like to do a crossover movie with those franchises, but apparently it's not in the works at the moment because no one wants to see it, apparently. If you were getting too hype of what we were just talking about, just like, you know, to kill that boner a little bit, there are no current plans to make the Power Rangers team up with all the robots from Pacific Rim to fight King Kong and Godzilla at the same time. <laughs> Even though that would be the hypest shit ever, I think we can all I, agree. I get the feeling that film would do well even if it was shit. Well, how could you possibly mess that up? <laughs> I love the Power Rangers, I think a lot of people know. And one thing that frustrated me about that live action Power Rangers movie was that they were very clearly embarrassed of the source material, which is why they try and shy away from the sillier aspects of it, which is kind of weird considering how campy some parts of that movie were. And it really frustrated me as well, the bit where they played the original Power Rangers theme song as all the Zords like burst out of the mountainside and go to fight Goldar. It's like, that's cool, but then they immediately cut the song off. Because you know, like, oh, we can't have it play, that's too cheesy to have, like, you know, it's like 
crappy 90s butt rock soundtrack playing in the background. It's like, no, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to hear. Stupid crappy butt rock as you see some dumb robot fight a giant monster. That's awesome. That's why people like the original series. Stop trying to make it more serious than it is. It reminds me of Transformers where they tried to make Transformers more serious than the original cartoon was. And it just sucks shit the entire way through because they make it all dour and depressing. So that's not what I want from a movie where giant robots fight each other. So yeah, if you find yourself some free time and a copy of Pacific Rim on DVD or Blu-ray next year, why not re-watch it and see if you can spot any of the similarities between the cool, awesome robots and kaiju in that movie and things in our own robotless world. You know, before the scene with the boat saw, because by that point you'd be too hype. So Pacific Rim 2 comes out later this month. Yes, it does. I can't I, wait. I remember it not doing well. Why has it got a sequel? What, Pacific Rim 1? Yeah, it didn't do well at the box office because everyone went and watched Grown Ups fucking 2. And this annoyed the shit out of me because Grown Ups 2, for anyone who doesn't know, Grown Ups 2 and the first Pacific Rim movie came out around the same time. And Grown Ups 2 absolutely crushed it at the box office. And Pacific Rim, like, it did reasonably well. Like, it, did, it had moderate success, but... Like, Grown Ups 2 absolutely just smashed it in every conceivable way at the box office. And I don't know if you've ever seen Grown Ups 2, Brad. It's shit. <laughs> it's basically just Adam Sandler paying himself and all his friends to go on vacation. It's probably one of the worst movies I have ever seen. It's so bad. And yet, it utterly just destroyed this lovingly crafted homage to everything awesome about pop culture <laughs> made by a guy who absolutely just loves that kind of thing that features giant robots punching giant monsters and boat swords and cool flaming knives that pop out of robot arms and mid-air punch fights between 80 foot tall giant creatures of destruction it's like yeah but people want to go watch chris rock and Adam Sandler, go to a beach, I guess. Wasn't Grown Ups 1 pretty shit as well? Grown Ups 1 is terrible. Isn't that the one that was marketed as a comedy film and it's all about cancer? No, 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 that's not that one. That's, oh God, what movie's that? Oh my God, oh my God, no. That's uh, The Do-Over. People don't know, The Do-Over is a movie that is on Netflix because, you know, fuck the world. Let's just give Adam Sandler money to keep making shit movies. The Do-Over is a shitty Adam Sandler movie and I'm absolutely not making this up. You can find a clip because I was baffled because me and my housemate have this thing where we watch crappy Adam Sandler movies because we hate ourselves and we can't believe that he keeps getting work. And we watched The Do-Over and we got about halfway through it and he's like, I'm going to bed. I, I, I'm, I'm just not. And I watched it to the end. And I want to spoil it. The crux of that movie is that David Spade literally hides the cure for cancer up his ass. I am not making this up. This is a movie that Adam Sandler got paid to make. We found something rather alarming in his rectum. It appears to be a USB drive. David Spade literally hides the cure for cancer in his anus. I'm saying it twice because I was so baffled. Because I, I text my housemate the next day saying, that movie ended with a character literally pulling the cure for cancer out of their ass. And he went, you're making that up. It can't be that bad. And he came home and he re-watched it with me and we were like, you weren't even lying, mate. How, how, how did you get paid to do this? How is this man still employed? How? And then what we read about after that is, like, Adam Sandler signs on with Netflix for another four movies. I'm like, oh, fuck the world. The thing is, I wasn't even talking about the do-over. I was talking about funny people. Is that a do it as well? I've not I'm, seen that one yet. I, well, I mean, I don't think David Spade hides a cure for cancer up his ass, but I'm sure that one's about um, Adam Sandler realising his character's got cancer. Oh, my God. It's, it's like, I get... I don't get how he keeps getting work. Like, grown-ups, I think either one or two, I forget which one, they blend into each other. There's a scene where four men in their mid-40s look at one other characters in that scene's like 18-year-old daughter and just lust over her while their wives are like in the house looking after their children. 
and it's never played as like being a creepy thing, ever. Mm. I hope that car never gets fixed. <laughs> I don't think it will. I took the spark plugs out. Nice. Oh, there's a scene in um, Pixels. This is one that pissed me off. Pixels, we all know it's a shit movie. The scene in that, what really frustrated me, where right at the start of the movie, Adam Sandler's character <laughs> goes into that woman's house and he's like, he's the geek squad. And he finds her in her house, like, in her room, crying, drinking a bottle of wine. Are you all right? I'm sobbing on the floor in my closet drinking Charlie out of a sippy cup, so I guess not. And I watched that scene a couple of times back. And if you pause it, you'll see it. she's drunk at that point. About half that bottle of wine. And then her and Adam Sandler drink about another glass each. That's the end of that scene ends with them both driving to the White House. <laughs> which means that that woman drank half a bottle of wine and then climbed into her car and then drove on the road. Whoa, she went from zero to psycho in 3.4 seconds, a new world record. And I don't care about the rest of the <laughs> movie. Wasn't, I thought you were going to go on about how no, creepy it was. No, he no, went no. and sat down with her and oh, yeah, where, he her. where he tries to kiss the woman who's emotionally unstable and he's, and clear, and he's clearly been drinking all day. Whoa. Are you trying to kiss me? Absolutely not. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that bit's in it where Adam Sandler tries to kiss that woman. But no, the bit that pissed me off is that they both get up and drive after that. For the sake of balance, Carl, what is your favourite Adam Sandler film? I don't know, it's one where he dies. <laughs> I fucking hate him. He ruins every movie he's in. He's good in Waterboy and that's about it. But he plays the same fucking character in every movie and it's not funny anymore. Please go away, Adam Sandler. Do not release Grown Ups 3 as a surprise hit this <laughs> month. This month. <laughs> Grown Ups 3 is like the Netflix thing of the Cloverfield Paradox where he just releases it on Netflix and everyone goes and watches that. It's like a Pacific Rim 2, I'll die. I'll just, I'll say it, I'll just end it all. None of that. Fuck it, I'm done. It angers me.